Hello all you beautiful people, how are you doing here today? This love of Tim Tristan, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome, hi! So today we are going over a, another tutorial for Tinker's Construct. It is the 116.5 version and uh, the beginner one we did last time. If you missed that, I will have the link for that somewhere up above here. Um, but today we're going to go over everything getting us up to the melter. So then we will finally be able to create some better tools and smelt some ores. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we're going to need grout. So there's two different ways you can make this. The first way you can just take sand, gravel, and clay. I put a stack of each here because I typically make a lot at a time because you're definitely going to need a lot. But you don't have to. You can just do the bare minimum to get it started. Each recipe, however, will give you two. So, for instance, if you do like this, it'll actually give you two stacks of grout, which is pretty awesome. All right. The other way to do it is you can do the clay in the block form. And then you put four stacks of sand and four stacks of gravel. And that will give you eight for each. So... It doesn't matter which way you do it, it's still going to give you the same amount of grout. Uh, it's just personal preference which way you prefer to make it, that is all. Uh, because obviously this way you would make eight stacks at a time if you did it that like that. Alright, so next we're going to make the seared ingot gauge. Now these are pretty important and you're definitely going to want them. The fabulous thing is I use them. Not even just for my smeltery and for my melter, I also use them just to store liquids in because when you break them, it keeps all the liquid in it. So even if you need to go get buckets of lava, for instance, then you can break it and it'll keep everything in it, which I think is just fantastic. But to make this, you're just going to use four of the seared bricks and five of the glass. Now, how do we get the seared bricks? Let's go find out. So we're going to take that grout that we made. And you're going to put it in a simple furnace. And each one is going to give you one seared brick. And so that's how you are going to get these. It doesn't even have to be in a blast furnace, anything like that. Now, keep in mind, if you're playing a certain mod pack, sometimes they do change the recipes. So this is just for the base mod, not included in certain mod packs. A lot of mod packs don't play, change recipes, but some of them very much do. All right, so next, let's get started on the pieces for our melter. Now, that gauge that we had the recipe for over here, you're going to use that with five of these seared bricks to make the seared melter. Then, you're going to want the seared heater. Now, this one, you can do it one of two ways. You don't have to have this one. You can skip straight to the next one. It depends what you want to use to melt your items. So for the seared heater, we're going to use eight of the seared bricks like so, and that's going to make the seared heater. But you can also make the seared fuel tank. Now I make these quite a bit for your, you're definitely going to want them for your smeltery, but for the melter, uh, you can also make this too. The difference being with the heater you're going to use solid fuel so like coal and with this one you're going to use liquid fuel so think lava and it holds four buckets of lava in it all right and then we're going to need a couple more things so first of all we're going to need a basin and the basin and the table you can make one of them first you do not have to make both of them first but you have to have at least one so for the basin, which would make a block of, say, iron, gold, whatever you have in your uh, melter. So for the basin, you're going to do uh, seven of the blocks, but you're going to do them like in a U shape. The table is the exact opposite. Same amount, but you're going to do them in a, a table shape. I don't know what else to call it. Um, but you're also going to need at least one of these. So you're going to need a seared faucet. This is what allows it to pour out into whatever you're putting it into. So this recipe is three of the steer, seared bricks in the famous bucket pattern, but you're going to make two seared faucets. All right, this is what the melter looks like. So I have it simply set up 
with one, which is a pretty basic setup. Here it is with the seared heater. That's the one where you're gonna add coal and that would heat stuff in here. So it automatically shows up here. See if I were to take that out, it's not in there. But it automatically show up here and if you don't have fuel, it'll automatically show. So makes it really nice. There we go. <laughs> Just don't accidentally put it in there. Now, these are both gonna work the same way. So it can only melt three things at once. It has a very small inventory space and it only hold nine ingots of whatever you're smelting, okay? Now, there's two different ways, and then this way is with the heater. Now, if, see, this is the seared tank that I told you about before. Uh, so if I take a bucket of that and place it into here, now we have a fuel in here, and it'll show you here on the side. It holds the same amount because the melter is the exact same, and you can still only cook the same amount. Now with lava, it does cook faster, as you can see, than with the coal. So as soon as you can get to the lava, I highly suggest that because it's, it is such a big time saver, okay? All right, now tinkers, of course, it um, doubles your ores. So as you can see here, we have four, even though I put in Three. Now, when you get to a full smeltery, it doubles all the way. But this at least gives us a little bit more. Okay, so you can keep putting more in. Um, when it is completely full, it'll just stop here and tell you that you cannot place any more in. It will not let these finish going. Let me try to demonstrate this because there's no more room in here. Okay. Now, how are we going to get the stuff out? I put tables here, but we could also do the basin, like I said, and that would make a full block. So let's actually take a basin just so I can demonstrate. Let's take this basin here. And so, for instance, in this one, because we have it so very full, see how it says not enough free space for the fluid. Okay, so let's, let's actually do this one because and do something else with that one. All right, so then with the faucet here, you're just gonna right click on it and it's gonna automatically pour whatever is in there. If you do not have enough to make a full block like so, then you can simply melt more in here and as soon as you have a full block, it'll start forming it, okay? Okay, had to set it to daytime. Now, in order to make tools, ingots, all that different kind of stuff, we're gonna have to start with sand. One block of sand will give us four blank sand cast. Now, of course, you could start with gold if you already have gold, uh, but more likely than not, you're probably not going to. And then the other thing that I highly suggest is six seared ingots, um, and three glass, and that makes this seared ingot tank. And again, it holds 32 ingots of fluid. Now, why do I recommend that? Because then you have something sitting here that you could add stuff to. So we have the iron there. We're going to place it in there. It's going to start forming our brick. If we had nothing in there, we could actually take from here. But the reason why I recommend it is, you see we have stuff in here, right? But we can't do anything with it right now. If you place a bucket down and pour over it, it'll fill up your bucket with the fluid. And the reason that comes in so handy is because then I could have different ones of these tanks and if I have something in here, because in a melter, not only can you not combine things to make your alloys, but you also can't have more than one in here at a time versus when you have a full smeltery. So then I could place it in here and if I wanted iron or gold, something else than what was in here, let me empty this out. So now that I emptied that out, if I wanted to place something else in, I could simply put it in there with the bucket. Fabulous, right? I love it. All right, so what if we wanted to make say ingots. You place the sand cast down 
And I usually start with a seared brick ingot. You're gonna place it in here, kind of like you're forming the little pattern. And then you're simply gonna pour out again. The only thing with the sand one is, as you just saw, it uses up the cast every single time. So it got us our ingot, which is what we wanted, but then we have to once again form it and make another one. Now you can also do that for your tools. So um, there it is. So if we wanted to make a pickaxe head cast, because you know, we want better tools, then you can pour it like that. The sand ones do not last, however, and yeah. But just like that, we can upgrade our tools because now we can produce better pieces. Okay, so for the next part though, we're just going to get rid of this because, you know, sometimes you just don't need it. We're going to use the table. And as soon as you have something, now make sure you use an ingot for this part that you don't care about. So that's why I tend to use the seared bricks because it will eat up the ingot when it creates it. Okay, so we have gold in here. Gold is the other way to make cast. And these casts are great because they are permanent. So it's gonna form our cast, it ate the ingot, but we can pour it, it'll make us another ingot, but the cast stays. So you only wanna use the sand to get you started. Once you have the gold, you definitely want to do the cast. Now, again, we could do the cast of all the different things, you know, so we want to cast so we can make all the different pickaxe upgrades as we go. But just remember, it ain't my thing. So if you have something different like bone, you want to use that. Or you can make wood. A lot of times I will simply make a stone tool piece because then it doesn't matter. Stone's easy to get, right? All right, and there is the way you make all the different cast. And then, like I said, you can just switch these out. You can switch out what you're using in here. You can always have different kinds, but the biggest downfall to the melter is you cannot alloy anything. So there is no combining, there is no making any kind of bronze or anything that you cannot do with the melters. But it's a good step to get you started to make your tinker smeltery. And that's what we'll be talking about next time is setting up a tinker smeltery, how to do it, all the different configurations and block pieces that you can use, all that kind of cool kind of stuff. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or comments at all, definitely leave those down below. But um, Tinkers is really, really fun. I love this mod. It is one of my absolute favorites. And I know they changed a lot in 116, but it's still a lot of fun. So, all right. If you enjoy these and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can see when all the videos come out. That's how YouTube sends out notification of when I have a new video. All right. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Till next time, this is Love Attempters. Don't get burned.